Hi there, everybody. This is John Drew here from Elevated Planet. Angela Gabrielle here from Elevated Planet, and we'd like to welcome you to our show today. And we have such a treat in store for you, and John is going to tell us some more about it. Yes, Dronvalo Melchizedek. You may remember him from a couple of the shows we've done. I think we did one in June and one in July that covered some of his work. A very, very interesting man who is here uh, for a very specific purpose on the planet. He was a soul exchange walk-in back in April of 1972. You may have heard the piece that, where it was discovered why he was brought in. Because Melchizedek energy is a thing that's been around for thousands upon thousands, who knows, millions of years, for all I know. Um, but say, for instance, Jesus Christ was named in the, I think in the Hebrew Bible or version or whatever, that there was something along the lines of Jesus was claimed to be forever the high priest of Melchizedek. So Melchizedek is uh, where beings are brought in from higher dimensions to assist the planet undertaking tasks that the indigenous populations of the world could not undertake for themselves. So the reason Drumbalo came here was to help the planet leading into the time of, of, of change, the 13,000 year cycles. So he was here to work with the indigenous populations around the world to create the ceremony and the rituals that were required to bring in this new era. So we're going to explore this a little bit today, and we've got some things to to really, you know, focus us in on this. And also, I want to offer a quick uh, note of gratitude to Shanti Shakti Shon, who is the child of the light, who has recently joined our community for her inspiration in in mentioning Drumvalo. She met Drumvalo himself back in two thousand and six, and. It's kind of like, it's quite a story behind that, but but nevertheless, it was her mentioning it that kind of caused me to look a little bit deeper into the Drumbala thing, because we always knew we were going to come back anyway. And it, uh, we pulled together some materials for you. And then we have, we have an interview then also with uh, a lady called Viola Rose, who I have noticed has made it onto the Zoom. So I think a little wave there to Viola. <laughs> you will be bringing you in probably about quarter past to 20 past uh, the hour, Viola, because uh, that's uh, we're going to run through the first video section first just to set the scene. This is a really fascinating time on the planet. I, I've been blown away with by what I've learned just recently myself, and that's part of the joy of doing the Elevator Planet thing is I am constantly learning. You know, I've only been doing this stuff for just over six years myself, uh, which makes me a mere novice compared to many. But I, I kind of feel I represent the mainstream because it really wasn't that long ago that I had that very mainstream mindset. So I know exactly uh, what that feels like. And I also know how easy I could still be in that mindset right now. So everybody has their own version of truth. Everybody has their own trigger points for various things to happen. And mine happened six and a bit years ago and here i am on this journey and i love 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 this journey so without any further ado what i'm going to do is start this first little video sections it's two videos the first one is about the school of remembering which is a mystery school that was created by drumbolo a few years ago now i in conversation with viola just recently i discovered that the school of remembering was officially closed at the end of july uh, but it has been replaced and it has been replaced, as you will see on the opening notes for the video, by the rememberingtheheart.com. So whatever is covered in there is still very relevant to where we are going today. So if you bear with me a second, we will call that first video section in. Oh, and it goes into two different, and I'm not going to stop it between the two. There's the bit with drum below, and then there's a five minute section there, which gives a, a very scientific explanation of what is going on on the planet right now. And it backs up what drum below is talking about from a scientific perspective, because it's quite deep stuff. And it's not something I would have known off the top of my head. So I kind of searched out a little bit of extra extra scientific evidence to back up what is being said here. And I think it kind of makes it quite powerful. Oh, and the first video itself is a slightly dated one because it does go back. It was done a few years ago. So apologies for the grainy quality of that. The second one is a very detailed video of uh, modern, modern day science. Hello, everybody. I'm Drumvalo Melchizedek. 
and I'm the founder of the School of Remembering. And I used to be the founder of the Flower of Life that went all around the world with teachers everywhere for about 30 years. But we have learned so much in the last few years that we have created a new school called the School of Remembering. And uh, to include the secret knowledge of the heart. This is something that is essential and uh, so we have just transformed everything on a global level. The School of Remembering is a mystery school and it is using a very ancient knowledge that has been transmitted around the world in all kinds of traditions from Tibetan and Hindu to many other schools that you would never know because they were secret. This knowledge was transmitted in ancient languages all around the world a long time ago and as we approach more toward the to the modern times these schools are still going they're just hidden but they have a problem they are using ancient terms and ancient knowledge and ancient ways of perceiving to try to get you to understand something that in modern terms uh, it doesn't make a lot of sense and for this reason it takes about 21 to 40 years to be able to understand and to master this using these schools. So what I've done is spent most of my life studying these schools and now I understand what they're saying but what I've done is translated it into modern understandings and modern concepts and ideas so that the, so it flows and is understandable. And so instead of going 21 or 40 years uh, in the School of Remembering, you can get the same information in about four or five days. And this is important because we don't have 20 years or more to be able to study something at this point. From the very people who wrote those books and those understandings, they know that we don't have very much time left in the cycles before there's going to be very large transformations on Earth. And so that is one of the biggest advantages that we have. We are now at a paramount moment in history, and I think almost everybody on Earth can feel this. Uh, you can feel the speed at which things are happening. You can see the chaos all around us. Everybody feels the tension that is happening globally. Uh, this was the Mayan prophecy, the Hopi prophecy, the Kogi prophecy, that this is where we are, and this is what this is about. So we have come to this moment in history when we, as human beings, must respond in a way different than what we do in our normal everyday lives. We have to because of the, of the situation that we're in. We have to know things that we don't know yet. Uh, we have to remember things that we have long forgotten. And, and we can do this and you can do this, but it requires a little bit of a catalyst, a little bit of a help, and, and that's why we're here. So we've created a class called Awakening the Illuminated Heart. And this class goes far beyond the Merkaba that we taught in the Flower of Life. This includes all the secret knowledge of the heart. This is the knowledge that was never written down. It was always an oral tradition. It was hidden, kept away from the public and everything else for thousands, of, actually tens of thousands of years. And, and now we need this. And so this is the reason we created this school was to serve you and the world and to, and to present this knowledge in a simple way that we can all, all understand. So for you, we have created a class that goes far beyond the Merkaba, that includes the secret knowledge of love and, uh, and this knowledge that has been hidden for so long and how that all fits into everything that we need to know. Love is something that I know that we all understand from a feeling body how important it is, but from another level, love is way more important than we normally think. It is what creates everything in the universe. It creates the very reality that we walk around in. And we need to know these things. We need to remember who we really are and what this is all about. And this is what this class brings you to. It brings you to the point where you know who you are and you remember that love is the guiding light that makes everything come into balance. Without this love, we cannot ascend into higher consciousness and we cannot go beyond where we are now. There is another thing about this information. Now, sure, it is ascension information that we think will bring us into another world, but it's much more than that because it allows you to open up in ways 
to understand how things function and work. And you can apply that now, here, today, before you ascend. In certain cases, it is not just something that we kind of need to know, but really, without it, it's going to be a big deal. For example, uh, we have a cosmic event taking place right now. It's called the geomagnetic reversal. Our governments are doing everything they can to make sure that you don't know about this. The last time we've had a geomagnetic reversal was 780,000 years ago, according to science. So no living person has ever experienced this ever before. But the information is coming in from England and the United States and Russia and various places, and we're beginning to discover that the, the weakening of the geomagnetic field is important for us to understand. Right now, there are over 35 major diseases that are being caused purely by this geomagnetic field becoming so weak. And science recognizes this and knows it, though no one's telling you about this. If we can remember and we can begin to do something with our Merkaba and our heart that we have long forgotten, what that will do is it will recreate the geomagnetic field around your body separate from the earth itself and this will allow you to survive what most people on earth probably will not be able to survive. Did you know that earth has two north poles? There's the geographic north pole which never changes and there's the magnetic north pole which is always on the move. And right now, it's moving faster than usual. Over the last 150 years, the magnetic North Pole has casually wandered 685 miles across northern Canada. But right now, it's racing 25 miles a year to the northwest. This could be a sign that we're about to experience something humans have never witnessed before, a magnetic polar flip. And when this happens, it could affect much more than just your compass. Right now on the surface of the planet, um, it looks like it's just a bar magnet, right? Our compasses are just, are just you know, pointing toward one pole at a time because there's a dominant two-pole, dipole system. But sometimes, Earth doesn't always just have a single magnetic north and south pole. Evidence suggests that for hundreds to thousands of years at a time, our planet has had four, six, and even eight poles at a time. This is what has happened when the magnetic poles flipped in the past. And when it happens again, it won't be good news for humans. Now you might think that eight poles must be better than two, but the reality is that multiple magnetic fields would fight each other. This could weaken Earth's protective magnetic field by up to 90% during a polar flip. Earth's magnetic field is what shields us from harmful space radiation, which can damage cells, cause cancer, and fry electronic circuits and electrical grids. With a weaker field in place, some scientists think this could expose planes to higher levels of radiation, making flights less safe. This could also disrupt the internal compass in many animals, which use the magnetic field for navigation. Even more extreme, it could make certain places on the planet too dangerous to live. But what exactly will take place on the surface is less clear than what will undoubtedly happen in space. Satellites and crewed space missions will need extra shielding that we'll have to provide ourselves. Without it, intense cosmic and solar radiation will fry circuit boards and increase the risk of cancer in astronauts. Our modern way of life could cease to exist. We know this because we're already seeing a glimpse of this in an area called the South Atlantic Anomaly. Turns out, the direction of a portion of the magnetic field deep beneath this area has already flipped. And scientists say that's one reason why the field has been steadily weakening since 1840. As a result, the Hubble Space Telescope and other satellites often shut down their sensitive electronics as they pass over the area. And astronauts on the International Space Station report seeing a higher number of bright flashes of light in their vision, thought to be caused by high-energy cosmic rays that the weaker field can't hold back. Since experts started measuring the anomaly a few decades ago, it has grown in size, 
and now covers a fifth of Earth's surface, with no signs of shrinking anytime soon. This is so extreme that it could be a sign we're on the brink of a polar flip, or we may already be in the midst of one. But scientists remain skeptical, mainly because... The last thing the pulled reversed was 780,000 years ago. So it's, it's not, we don't have an oral record. <laughs> Turns out 780,000 years is over double the time that Earth usually takes between flips. Since the last mass extinction, there've been, uh, there been reversals roughly every 300,000 years. So what gives? Well, scientists haven't figured it out yet. It's unnerving to think that our modern way of life, banking, the stock exchange, missile tracking, GPS, relies on the outcome of something we can neither predict nor control. One study went so far as to estimate that a single giant solar storm today could cost the U.S. up to $41.5 billion a day in damages. And that's with the Earth's magnetic field at its current strength. It's frightening to even imagine the devastation a storm would bring to an Earth with a magnetic field only 10% as strong as it is now. We may not be able to stop a polar flip, but we can at least start to take measures to minimize the damage. The first step? Figure out what's going on with this wacky field. On the hunt are the European Space Agency's swarm satellites that are currently collecting the most precise data on the strength of Earth's magnetic field. Right now, they could be our greatest hope for solving this riddle. Right, here we go. I'm back again. So, okay, so this was the picture that we're really trying to paint here because this is important, okay? This is, I felt it was important to back up what Drumbelow had to say with, you know, a little bit of modern science as of, like, very recent times. And there's no doubt about it, this is a really big deal. As Drumbelow himself said, you know, I mean, he there was also part of Drumbelow's work where he mentioned about the the Mir space station when that was first sent out back in the 1980s. What happened there was that the first astronaut who was put there, we all went fine for the first week, and in the second week they lost touch with him, and then they had to go and get him back because they lost contact, and it turned out effectively his memory had been wiped, and. They brought him back and he was completely insane and they, they could not cure him from, from whatever he'd gone through. But they'd, they'd replaced him with another astronaut as they sort of like picked him up. The same thing started happening to him. So they went and got him back. So then the, the Mir space station remained unmanned for several years. And what they'd worked out is because it was beyond the Earth's electromagnetic field. So he was, no, he was then subject to all this radiation. Now, what's happening is that we are now starting to see, and particularly around Brazil and associated countries around there, they are now being exposed to a lot more solar radiation. And of course, what does this mean? Well, certainly from a cancer perspective, it's not good news. And in fact, there was a conference due on that this week where they had these eight major oncologists who were going to be presenting at a conference in Brazil. And uh, unfortunately, their aircraft was uh, uh, crashed. You may have seen that on the news, but that had eight major oncologists who were due to talk at a conference in Brazil on this very subject. Now, I'm just going back to this, the Mayan Ouroboros that uh, Drumvalo's book is just very briefly, just before I bring in Viola any second now, I just wanted to read this. He said, in approximately 2009, scientists who study the Earth's magnetic field, many of the same ones who spoke on NOVA, went onto the internet to warn the world. They had 11 days before the government shut them down out of fear of public panic. The scientists wrote that there were so many anomalies in the Earth's magnetic field that they believed that within 25 years, the geomagnetic field of the Earth could not only move to a new location, but could switch its polarity, meaning that the geomagnetic North Pole would become the South Pole and the opposite, which is what we just heard. In 2011, the same scientists went back onto the internet with even stronger warning. They said that the anomalies were so great that they feared the possibility of a magnetic pole reversal any minute. The government shut them down after only five days. So what we're seeing here is that, you know, this is something that is being hidden from public view. Now, I say that. But if you go on to YouTube and the likes, you will find details. And I would encourage you to do it because... As we always say on Elevated Planet, we don't ask you to take our mind, uh, our word for anything. If this is a time where it is pays to use discretion, personal discretion, and do your own research. 
because we are bombarded with as much misinformation as we are information. So I would always encourage you to do your own research. Now, having said all of that, at this point, I do want to bring in Viola. How are you, Viola? Hi, happy to be here. Oh, thank you very much for uh, coming all the way over from Sedona by, yeah. uh, by internet. <laughs> I love Sedona. I was only there back in June, and uh, it is a beautiful part of the world. And obviously, you are effectively uh, close by Drumvalo himself over there as well, correct? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. I live in a little town just outside of Sedona and Drumbo lives in an, another little town just outside of Sedona. So it's all in the community. Very nice. Very nice. And it is such a beautiful part of the world. The energies there are energies there are fantastic. Now, what we are talking about here, really, I suppose, you know, what I want, one of the points I'm, I want to make here is that Clearly, this is a time that humanity needs to sit up and take notice of this, something that we need to be aware of. But this is not just about trying to scare people as to what's going on around. It's all about finding a solution. And this is where Drumvalo, uh, Drumvalo has helped as well with, uh, with, with what he has created and put together, which Viola Rose has been part of that process. So... Would you care to share with us a bit of the, the origins of Awakening the Illuminated Heart workshop that has been put together? Yeah, sure. So in 2011 was the first time Drumbelow offered the Awakening, the Illuminated Heart workshop. Before that, he was offering the Earth Sky Heart workshop and then the Earth Sky workshop and then the Flower of Life workshop, you know, which started in the 80s. And it's been a progression because as a collective, we've also been progressing and evolving. So Drumbelow isn't just gonna create a workshop and then let it be static because he's a researcher and he's always searching. So as it's continued to evolve, as we've continued to evolve collectively. And back in the eighties, you know, things were much more, people were much more in their minds and people, even, even feminine minded people were being taught and trained right. to be very, very logical. Yes. And so when he presented the information about the Merkaba, as he was instructed to do from his guides, then he was told to reverse the order then which things were taught. So that way people could access it. So it never started with the heart. It started with the Merkaba because when people were in their minds more, they needed the sacred geometry and the interesting information about the Merkaba to get their interest. Right. And so it played its part and he taught it that way for many years. And what it did it is allowed people a way in to the heart because they started with ways that would interest them. And then over time, as more and more people were able to activate their Merkaba, which was done back at that time in a synthetic form because people weren't ready to get into their heart and act actually activate their natural heart-based living Merkaba, which is the one that is organic to us, that we naturally have around us. And until that time that we were ready to access it, he was given the guidance to have people create a Merkaba that was synthetic, but that... Um, would do and and so because it was synthetic you had to do the meditation every day right to keep it alive right yeah and so then in 2011 when enough people had activated their merkaba and when people were starting to come more and more into their heart he was finally given the green light go ahead now let's do it in the original order that was intended so in 2011 in november of 2011 he um gave his first Awakening the Illuminated Heart workshop in Sedona and, and, and introduced the original way of activating the Merkaba from the heart. And so this way the ego couldn't be involved as it could before when you started with the mind in the old way. And then from there, you could still have your ego intact. And then people could think that they're spiritually superior or they might change the way that they were doing it and try to teach it to the world as if they were masters. Well, with this way, you start with the heart. And from there, you learn to open the third eye and activate the Merkaba. And so it's a fail safe because the ego isn't involved. And I got to be at that workshop with Drumbelow in 2011 uh -huh. and uh, take that workshop. And it was, he teaches it in five days. Most of us teachers teach it in four, but he would do it for 140 people at a time. So it took longer. And every day in that workshop, I would walk away going, oh my God, this is the most important thing I have ever done or ever learned. And so on the last day when he said, you know, I want to train people, I want to select a hundred people from around the world and train them 
to be my facilitators to teach this work. I just knew, you know, that, yeah. that was for me. So I've been doing this ever since uh, I trained with him in January of 2012. And since then I have been doing this. I've taught over a hundred of these four day intensives, you know, I've just been living and breathing it and it's still as magnificent and as relevant and as powerful as ever, possibly even more now than ever. Right. Right. You know, and I, I do love this, uh, this whole principle. Now, one thing that I would ask you to just explain a little bit more for our audience particular is the, the Merkaba, right? Just uh, give us a little bit more about what is the Merkaba and how that operates. So the Merkaba is your light body. It is your ascension vehicle. And it is talked about in ancient texts as the Merkaba, Merkava, different, you know, places. And it is, it is what is our field, electromagnetic field that allows you to, to move through dimensional levels. And the heart-based Merkaba that we're talking about in the Awakening the Illuminated Heart is our natural Merkaba. And it is a fourth dimensional technology because in Drumbolo's understanding, we're going from the third to the fourth and then onward from there. And a dimensional shift usually follows a pole shift. So that is very interesting that you started with the information ah. <laughs> of the pole shift and how that is relevant and why Drumbolo talks about that in relation to the Merkaba is that the weakening of the magnetic fields weakens so much so that the poles can actually shift. And that will often then trigger a dimensional shift. And so since all the signs are pointing to the fact that we are getting closer and closer to a pole shift, then it, it is more likely that we're also getting ready to shift into this fourth dimensional level. And now in between dimensional levels, there's a void. Just like nice. notes on the piano, right? We have a harmonic note here, C, and then we have a harmonic note here, D. In between that is dissonance. So in between the dimensional levels, you've got to go through the void, sometimes called that three days of darkness or the void space in between. And in order to go through to the next higher dimensional level, you have to be running a technology that is of that higher dimensional level. Yeah. So any third dimensional technology will not take you through the void into the fourth dimension. You need a fourth dimensional technology, which the heart-based Merkaba is. Yeah. And so it is an electromagnetic field. It is a dualistic field because in the third dimension, we have a lot of duality, but in the fourth dimension, we even have a small amount of duality. So it is an electromagnetic counter rotating field that rotates at nine tenths the speed of light around your body, which will allow you to keep your memories intact when right. a pole shift happens. Whereas you said those astronauts lost all their memories when they went into outer space, but your electromagnetic field keeps your memories in the transition and allows you to go consciously to the next dimensional level. So that is what Drumbolo is here to teach. That is the importance of it because we're getting ready for that time. And if we have our Merkaba intact, we'll go consciously. And one other thing, if it doesn't happen necessarily in our lifetime, it still is very relevant because when you die, if you die with an activated Merkaba, you keep your memories intact. So you get to die consciously and therefore not get looped in the reincarnation loop. You can be free to then go on to the higher levels of existence. Yeah. I mean, this is all remarkable stuff. And, you know, I, it's one of the joys I've had since uh, I only really, really recently discovered uh, Drumvelo. Uh, myself and you know i i loved reading the books i i t it totally aligns with with my beliefs and the way that my evolution has has has, has expanded over these last few years and you know it, it, and particularly being in touch with well like the walk-in side of things that we were talking the other day about the sheila seppi thing and you know how that linked me in ultimately to identify who drum himself was and understanding that we're going through this incredible time on earth transformation a shifting of energies and this is one of the things that always really interested me as well is that when you look at uh, you know, one of the ones that I've studied a lot over the years is Dolores Cannon and her work in QHHT and listening to all this amazing stuff about the, the Earth shift. You know, the, the splitting of the of the planet effectively was the way that it was, you know, visualized. How does that happen when you know that there is a split? And it makes sense. There are those who will prepare themselves for higher dimensional shift. And that those that will not be able to will choose. I mean, it's a choice, right? Every, everything, everything on this planet is free will. You know, there's nobody is going to force anybody to do anything. It's just a case of whether you can actually 
get your head around the fact that life is not what we think it is. It is so much better. It is so much more expanded. It is so much opportunity to expand your consciousness to a higher level. But understanding that from a 3D perspective, as I know, if I'd have wound the clock back six years, I would have struggled this co with this concept. Now, I can drink it in. And, and one of the things I will tell the Elevated Planet community, I know that when I, I, I saw the work of Viola Rose earlier this week, and one of the things that really drew me to her particular version of the course was the fact it was available uh, as, a, as, a, as an online course that you could do separately yourself. I mean, do you want to just uh, fill in the details on that one a bit, Viola? Oh, sure. So, yeah, I've been facilitating the work for, you know, since 2011, and it was always done in person, actually, yes. for years and years. And then, of course, when everything locked down, I had a workshop scheduled two weeks out and nobody wanted to come because they were all too scared. And I thought, you know, this this work is more relevant now than ever. I'm just going to do it online and see if it works. I didn't even know if it would work. And I taught it online and to my surprise, it actually worked in some ways better than the in-person workshop. You know, you don't get the, the community aspect and yes. the hugs and the lunch breaks, but yes. people were in the comfort of their own homes. And were able to go much deeper into the meditations because there was no distractions. They weren't traveling across the country, you know, staying in Airbnbs and whatnot. And so I became a fan of it. And then eventually we did get Drumbelow's permission to teach it online. So I've been doing that. And most teachers have moved on to now just going back to do it in person. But I still love the online workshop because people can attend from all over the world. It costs less, there's less travel fees. And so I've continued to do that. And then when the School of Remembering was gonna be closing its website down uh, at the end of the summer, I mean, at the end of July, I realized, well, why don't I have an, a pre-recorded version that this way when people contact me and they actually wanna do the workshop, it'll be harder to come up with whole groups to do it live online. Yes. And so uh, I recorded a workshop that I had done just this in June with a group of eight people and they all gave me permission to be able to use it in this way. And so I do have a pre-recorded workshop. And so what I'm doing is I went through the workshop and you know gave instructions if a person was doing it on their own. And I send a person the recording of day one, they watch it. And then afterwards they ask me questions. We set up an audio correspondence so we can audio text each other and ask questions and share. And so you're doing it on your own time and so you can take up to two weeks to go through it if you need to and you can do it in your own schedule but at the end of each day we have a correspondence and so you're getting real-time instruction from me but doing it in your own time and it's actually working really well because people can it, especially people who maybe who don't speak English very well can go slower can rewind can do the meditation a second time and uh, so people are really loving that version yeah, I mean, I'm really drawn to that because uh, I, I and particularly since in early September, I, I know that I've got about 11 days of relative quiet here where I will not have many distractions. So that is when I have already mentally put aside the time to to actually go through that. So um, what I would say is that we will put Viola Rose's full details on here on the newsletter um, and on the subtext of this particular recorded video once we have uh, get it once we do the editing process so everybody will get access to that information to explore it for themselves um but certainly i will report back once uh, i've gone through uh, viola rose's uh, awakening the illuminated heart workshop as well i'm excited about it and i did want to add that as i i'm still doing the you know the live workshops as well so i do the next online in real-time workshop I have is October 19 to mm -hmm. 22. And then the next in-person workshop I have is in Sedona, February 14 to 17. So, uh, you know, there are options if somebody wants to go in, through in real time, but if you want to do it in your own schedule and fit it in whenever you want, that's a, the re recorded version is available for any time. Sure. And, and I can understand each one has its own benefits as well. You know, because yeah. it exists. The flexibility of being able to choose your own time and in your own space uh, no travel, no disruption from that perspective. But at the same time, being there with the community also definitely has its benefits as well. Yeah. And what I do is four times a year, I offer a refresher course for people who've already gone through the workshop. 
And it's just a donation based thing. And it's a half day to go through all the processes and all the meditations and everything of the workshop because I love this so much. And I've been doing it so long. I know how valuable it is. It's, you know, it's a part of my daily life as a practice and as a facilitator. And so people very often will go through a workshop get the nugget, move on to the next thing. It's what we do as seekers. But this work, it's so valuable to have these tools accessible on the regular that I quarterly offer that refresher course half day. And so even if someone goes through on their own in the pre-recorded version, they will still have access to do the real-time follow-up refresher courses with me any anytime. So there's opportunities for both. I love that. That really does make a lot of sense. And as you say, it kind of overcome, uh, overcomes that um, lack of community feel, right? For yeah. when you do it, absolutely. That's very well thought out. So I, I you know, I tr- truly appreciate that. And I, and I agree. I think this is, this is possibly one of the most important things for us to realize that is going on out there. And, you know, I'm, I'm keen that when people actually see this video, that they share it. Because I think that the more we get this word out there, people need to understand what is going on at a planetary level. And that's nobody's fault. That's not a result of pollution or anything like that. This is a natural cycle. But it's it's a natural cycle which is presenting us with an opportunity to go into a higher level of consciousness. But it does take, as as Drumbelow himself said, it takes a catalyst, right? A catalyst to move ourselves uh, to, to through this ascension process but it, it's been narrowed down to such a an extent i mean it used to take 21 to 40 years to learn it through the ancient uh, ancient way so to narrow it down to four days is actually uh is is pretty clever really but yeah you know this is sovereignty training I, that's not a word i've heard drum below use but it's the one i use because for me what i see in this training is it's all about that we have everything we need inside of ourselves to walk the path of ascension. And we just maybe need to be reminded of that, which is why Grumbelow called the school, the school of remembering, because we just, we know all this stuff. We just have to remember it. But to be able to activate your Merkaba, your light body um, that you have naturally within you, that's so empowering. Then Mm. you make access to your higher self and have the guidance directly from your own higher self, learn to access the unified field from the, the center of your heart. Like we have all these technologies within us. You know, we are sovereign and we can be sovereign. And in a way, it's a workshop to end all workshops because then you have your tools and you don't need to look outside of yourself for answers anymore because that's where the duality will trip you up. But when you're inside in the unity of your heart, then everything is clear. Yes. Yeah. In fact, we have a last few seconds before we go into Joe Lay's meditation that that we have a little piece again from Drumbelo. It's only about 45 seconds, but it's where he actually talks about that, you know, the duality of the mind relative to to the heart kind of thing. So, you know, so that's the perfect, perfect little line up there for us as well there. So uh, thank you for that, uh, Viola. So, yeah, and and here's a, an image as well. I just want to show, show this. So here is a, an image of how that toroidal field looks. Now, the one on the left, which says fear, is kind of more of your, you know, this is a, a shrunken, a condensed uh, toroidal field, which is as a result of the duality, it's a result of fear-based. And yet when you go into the, the, the heart-based type of thing, this, it shows how expansive and strong that field is relative to when you're in the duality of the mind. That's, that, I just thought I'd show that because I think this is the important point that people need to understand. You know, this, it's an invisible field, right? It doesn't mean it's not there. It is there. We are magnetic beings, right? We, we have electricity, running through us it's part of what we are we have electricity we have water we have you know we're, we're all light we're you know 99.9999% light and 0.0001% particle all this amazing stuff right you know to create this this incredible you know human vehicle for us to travel through through life but honestly i see so much value in the way that you know this comes to you know go focuses in on the heart strengthens that field enables us to withstand this bombardment of of of, uh, electromagnetic energies coming in at us because we don't have the earth's defenses to the same degree therefore uh, as john below himself has said is that it's all you know because you have you have this heart-based kind of uh, way of being these things won't affect you. Is that is that an accurate description, Viola? 
Absolutely. There is, you know, love is the most powerful force in the universe. And the more that we're anchored here and living in the heart, we have more ability to just say, no, no, thank you. I'm not going to buy into fear. I'm not going to buy into that story. I'm not going to buy into that thing and just stay in our heart. You know, the ability that to not go into fear, the more we don't go into fear, the more we can't be controlled. And so on a, on a, and an emotional level and on a psychological level, that's true, but also on an energetic level, like you just showed, the force field of love and the Merkaba is so protective <clears throat> and so strong yeah. that you become fearless and you can walk in the world in any way and know that nothing can really touch you. This is absolutely true. And this is what I love about this. You know, it's coming back to this fearless perspective. And we, we do get because but the problem is we've been programmed and conditioned for a lifetime. And those who are still in the mainstream, as I was up until the age of almost 58 years old, you know, I, to me, I was lit, that world was my world. And it's only that I have learned, learned incrementally that actually life is so much bigger and better than that. And, but we have been controlled. We've been manipulated. But now is an era where all this comes to light and we start to understand that we have sovereign power that is enormous and so what you're saying to me, Viola, is really music to my ears because, you know, whatever takes us into our sovereignty and to the realization of our true power is what Elevated Planet is really all about. So um, and I just want to ask Jolie, actually, if uh, if she'd care to, to to join us for a moment. Jolie, are there Hi. any questions, any questions <laughs> you would care to ask Viola? Oh, Viola, thank you so much for joining us. It's truly uh, an honor, and I'm so grateful. I have no questions. I think you guys did such a great job. I think you answered everything. And so I'm going to let you guys go on ahead and wrap it up, okay? Okay, thank you very much. So, uh, Viola, is there anything you would care to add before we start to move towards the meditation? I think I'll just close with saying that you can find out a whole lot more about the workshop on my website, violarose.com. So that's really simple. Yeah. And there's a lot of information there about that and a lot of videos as well that I've done, different interviews and different uh, introductory classes for free all up on my website at violarose.com. Wonderful. And as I say, we're going to put links onto the newsletter as well and everything. So uh we, uh, I'm excited about it. I'm excited about it uh, to take it myself in uh, maybe about another two to three weeks. So <laughs> it's in the not too distant future. So uh, Viola Rose, I would just love to say thank you to you. And, you know, I think that what you're doing is amazing. And Drumbolo, you know, what can I say about him? You know, I mean, the man is the man is here on a very special purpose. And to be linked into the work that he's doing is an honor. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, delightful to be here. Thanks for bringing me on. Thank you, Viola. And we'll let you get back on to, uh, to breakfast time in Sedona. <laughs> Sounds good. Thanks. OK, to the Elevated Planet community. Now, where we're heading is the meditation side of things, because we've got a lot of information here that we've had today. And I think that this is where Jolay is going to work her magic, sprinkle some of her fairy dust on all these points that have come to the fore. And... Before we go into the meditation, I also want to, I just wanted to offer continued healing vibes to Janet. Janet, who is one of our regulars uh, in the community, and she just recently had an operation and she's recovering well. But we want to just send yet more healing vibes to Janet because we love her to bits. She's uh, She's been a great part of our community. But also to Shanti Shakti Shon, who I mentioned earlier, who... Uh, was the inspiration for today's shows to get us pointed to Drumbolo. And you know what? I don't think there's any coincidences out there. I think she has a very role, uh, a special role to play. But she herself is going through uh, battling her own demons at the moment. And we want to send her all our love, healing and blessings and strength for that journey that she is on as well. And Jolie, you know, I think the other thing that we wanted to mention was any, if anybody has anything in future that you want to uh, us to mention so that it becomes part of the meditation. What do you think, Jolie? Absolutely. I would say write to us or let us know in the comments if there's someone that you would like to send this loving energy to. So collectively we can do that and help yeah. them heal. 
Okay, right. So what we're going to do now then is we are going to go to a final little section of video, which is literally about 45 seconds long, which is drum below uh, explaining some of the things we were just talking about. And immediately after that, without hesitation, that is when it will just continue and Jole will start to work her magic with the guided meditation and visualization. What we don't know, most people don't know, is that we have another emotional body. And that's connected through the heart. And, but that emotional body has no polarity to it. And so there is the only place that you can experience what everybody's talking about of unconditional love. We can create from the brain, but we'll get a polarized creation pattern when we do it. We can leave our brain and go into our heart, and we can create from there and then we get exactly what the intention is. So put your feet flat on the floor, your palms face up on your thighs, and just begin to breathe with the rhythm of your body. Bring your awareness to the center of your chest, to that place that is a symbol of loving vibrations, compassion and forgiveness, and command your heartbeat to sync up with your breath. I want you to go ahead and command for all of the blood being pumped out of your heart and throughout your body to turn heart-shaped into the shape of a heart, moving loving, healing, transformative energy throughout the body. Moving out anything that no longer serves you, anything you're ready to let go of and release. As we let the heart do its thing, we bring our awareness to between our sit bones and we ground our energy into Mother Earth. At a resting state, your grounding cord is six inches in diameter and connected to your first chakra. As it moves through the crust of the lithosphere and it travels at the speed of love through the lithosphere and roots itself into the core of Mother Earth, bringing you into the present moment receiving all of her nurturing, loving energy. As those golden rose-shaped scrubbing bubbles mobilize to the blanket, the inside and the outside of your grounding cord, cleaning off the past, the things that no longer serve you, any disease, any illness, anybody else's energy, these golden rose-shaped scrubbing bubbles are bringing you into the present moment and back to your pristine nature. And a place of curiosity and compassion and collective energy and collaboration built on love. So this grounding cord is made of love. All of the little atoms in the cells are heart-shaped connecting you to the frequency and the vibration of the loving energy of Mother Earth. As you let that take place and bring your awareness into the center of your head. And here, you're going to open your crown and allow for 85% cosmic gold from the heavens to cascade down into the crown and saturating your skull and your brain. But let's get into the science of it so the left brain can relax and allow for the right brain to do what it does. In between the skull and the brain are three layers of tissue. And we make sure that gold light it's the dura mater, which is the outer layer of that tissue. And the inner is the arachnoid, the middle layer. 
see that gold light light up all of that web-like structure in the center, as well as reaching the Pia Mater, which is the closest to the skull. And you see that gold light work its way through the tissue and into the brain and into the folds and into the synapses, the neurons reprogramming you to default to the messages from the heart as that loving vibration that your blood has turned into is moving and integrating with that gold light. Let that take place as you begin to open the bottoms of your feet like you would the lens of a camera, calling in 15% earth energy of a color that resonates with you, pooling in the bottoms of your feet, taking on that love that your blood is giving, that frequency, that electricity, that vibration of love as Mother Earth takes in that command and travels up the side channels of your legs, mixing in with that beautiful, beautiful energy that is you as that gold light begins to cascade down your spine, lighting up each vertebra, animating those nerves, working out any blockages, anything you're ready to let go of and release moving down and meeting that earth energy in the first chakra as it then begins to fill you up like water fills up a cup. Mixing in with the earth energy in the feet as it comes up, moving throughout your body, all the ligaments, the muscles, the cells, the bones, moving up, up, up into your hips. All of this love is moving out. And as it begins to move up and into your heart, your heart opens and this begins to sprout out into your aura layer, lighting it up, resolving and dissolving any traumas from the past as it moves throughout your aura layer, fixing any holes, any rips, any tears, getting rid of anyone else's energy, giving it back to them, calling all of your energy back as this essence moves out and up and meeting with that beautiful earth energy, 15%, and that cosmic gold life force energy, 85%, as it's sprouting out of your feet, hands, and crown chakras, filling up your aura layer as you take a deep breath in and exhale as I gently remind you, you are grounded and rooted into Mother Earth with the grounding cord, which at its resting state is six inches in diameter. It is blanketed with golden rose shaped scrubbing bubbles, cleaning off all negative energy. Your aura is now a foot and a half around you, lit up with that energy from mother earth and cosmic divine, sprouting out your feet, hands and crown chakra. As your higher self is standing at a position of power at a comfortable distance above your head, receiving all of these divine messages of love as it then connects to your toroidal field, which is moving out into the universe, bringing loving vibrations, helping to elevate the planet as that is locked into a pyramid directly above with a capstone which then connects to all of the ley lines and the energy of Mother Earth as you are safe and divinely protected and connected to Mother Earth, to your environment, and to the highest part of you. As a beautiful white light then begins to laser beam down from the heavens, through Mother Earth, through that capstone, down through that pyramid, lighting up and fortifying that toroidal field that's filled with your unique DNA and your energy as it then moves down through the toroidal field, through your higher self, 
moving through that beautiful golden oil, that 85% that's cascading down already, down through your crown, through the center of your head, down through your spine, down through your grounding cord and into the core of Mother Earth. As those golden rose shaped scrubbing bubbles fall away and that white light extends and expands, becoming one with your grounding cord. And all that love from Mother Earth, from you, from the divine, working in tandem to help you illuminate mankind, elevate your frequency and vibration and move you into a place of unspeakable beauty. Let all of this love and light encompass you Encompass all your cells that are love. And now see those loving cells that are your body connect and they turn into the infinity symbol. Little love cups on either side, letting you know that you are infinite and you are connected to that infinite energy of loving creation. As you sit in the center of your chest, and you allow for Mother Earth, the divine, and your uniqueness to resonate throughout this dimension with love. Take a deep breath in. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Exhale. And allow that love to expand especially in the back of you. Let that light encompass you, surround you, and let those loving vibrations reverberate throughout your environment as this love continues to cycle. Take a deep breath in, exhale, Continue to breathe with the rhythm of your body. And I want you to visualize the bottoms of your feet closing like the lens of a camera, just like your hands are gently closing like the lens of a camera. And your crown is gently closing like the lens of a camera as that gold light recedes, but that white light remains. Cold light recedes as Mother Earth energy recedes back down. And as your ore layer locks in to the higher self, the toroidal field, the pyramid, the white light, and your astral body is snapped in. Feet and feet, knees and knees, hips and hips, hands and hands, elbows and elbows, shoulders and shoulders, and head and head. As you take a deep breath in and you allow for this energy to settle. And when you are ready, you can open your eyes. Thank you so much for joining us, Elevated Planet Community, and have a great rest of your day. Thank you very much, Joe. Like, that was beautiful. Love that. And yeah, thank you very much for all that. And also thank you to Viola Rose as well for her input today, which was invaluable and exciting. So, you know, what we've done today, we presented you with something that we need to know about. This is, you know, something that you can research for yourself. And we would always recommend you research it for yourself. Don't just take Elevated Planet's word for it. Have a look at it see what you think. You know, we're always here to field any questions as well. But as well as fielding the issue that is going to be coming upon us uh, in increasing quantities, and we know that, you know, Brazil and uh, surrounding countries are very vulnerable at this particular point in time, but we're also presenting a solution here which actually takes us to higher dimensions. It takes us to a more beautiful way of living life. And I'm excited to explore it. So, you know, I will be doing research on behalf of Elevated Planet to check out the workshop and anybody else who feels drawn to do it as well, by all means, check it out, violarose.com. 
and you will find details of it there. Uh, but, you know, I think really other than that, it's, uh, it's just to say thank you. Thank you, Joel A. And thank you to the Elevated Planet community, as always, for, for being here with us today. Any questions or anybody who wants to join our distribution list, John Drew at elevatedplanet.life is the place to come. Oh, that's the other thing. If you've enjoyed this, Give us one of those thumbs up things on uh, YouTube. You know, I always forget about that. but <laughs> It does help, by the way. So, you know, if, if, if you didn't like it, then forget I ever asked. That's about it. Till next week, we will wish you the best of weeks and see you next Sunday.